Hey, what's up? This is Akiba from Freak Labs. In this video, I'm going to go over how to decode DMX frames using an Arduino. The reason why you'd want to decode DMX frames using an Arduino is because then you could use it to interface the Arduino to a lighting controller and decode the frames and send the outputs to uh, the light of your choice. And this gives you a lot of control over what types of lights you can interface to. Like, you might want to interface to LEDs, you might want to interface to uh, AC lights. Uh, you might want to just control a solid state relay to toggle uh, Christmas lights. So you can do all of that uh, with a DMX and an Arduino. Before we get into the actual implementation, then it's a good idea to understand what DMX is. So this is a diagram of a DMX frame. And a DMX frame consists of four main parts. So you have the brake, the mark after brake, channel zero, which always holds the start code, and then 511 channels. Each channel is 8 bits wide and can hold a value from 0 to 255. The break and the mark after break is used to signal when the frame starts. From there, each frame will always hold 512 channels. To determine the channel number, the DMX decoder will need to count the number of channels after the frame start, and that will give you uh, the current channel that you're working on. So for a DMX controller, we're going to be using a freeware program called Vixen, which is available for the PC. And Vixen is a DMX-based lighting sequencer, which allows you to create channels that correspond to uh, the DMX frame. Each channel corresponds to one light, and so when you have a sequencer like this, then it allows you to create patterns that will be output via DMX, and uh, it'll allow you to control uh, your lights automatically. And the nice thing about Vixen is that it also has an integrated MP3 player, and so you can synchronize your lights to music. If you're following along with this project, I'd recommend you do this on a fresh install of the Arduino IDE. We're going to need to hack one of the core Arduino files, uh, which is the hardware serial.cpp. And the reason why is because we need to hijack the interrupt service routine, which is currently being used by it. So when we hijack the interrupt service routine, then uh, you won't be able to access uh, normal functions on your Arduino, like uh, serial.print and things like that. When I say we're going to hijack the interrupt service routine, what I mean is that we're going to comment out the original one in the Arduino IDE, and we're going to implement our own. Once we've removed the interrupt service routine from the core libs, then it's time to start writing our Arduino code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, handle the setup of the variables, uh, the defines, and some enumerated constants, especially for the state machine. The enumerated states that I just typed correspond to the DMX frame sequence that we were talking about earlier, where you have the idle, the mark after break, the start code, and then uh, normal operation. I just created a couple of variables, and I'm going to go through what each of them are for. First one is the DMX start address, and that's for if the user doesn't want to start from address uh, 1, which is the default. Like, if the user has a device that wants to respond from channel 100, then you would change the DMX start address to 100. So the second variable, DMX address, is just a helper variable in order to implement uh, the start address functionality. So the next variable, DMX pin, is an array of 8-bit values, and so these handle the pin numbers that will be toggled by the DMX data. So in this case, we're going to use digital pins 8, 9, 10, and 11, which will be controlled by DMX channels 1 through 4. I'm creating the DMX data array, which is a character array that's going to hold the data from the DMX frame. After that, I'm creating the update variable, and the update variable will communicate from the interrupt service routine to the main loop and tell it when it's okay to update the uh, pins. So after every DMX frame is finished, then the update variable will be set, and the main loop will then know it's time to update the uh, pins. Now we're just adding some comments as is good coding practice. And after that, we're going to be setting up the skeleton functions for the main setup and loop. Oops, forgot the main state machine variable. Now that we have the setup and loop skeleton function set up, we can start writing the initialization code. For Arduinos, the initialization code goes inside the setup function. And uh, the things that we need to initialize are the variables, the state machine, and the peripherals that we'll be using. You can see that I'm initializing my variables. So my update flag is initialized to the value of 0. Uh, my state machine is initialized to the idle state. And I'm also setting up my, the pins that I'll be using on the Arduino to be output. 
and to output the value of 0. And finally, we're going to initialize the UART. And so for DMX, the UART is going to require some special settings. So we're going to need to set the UART baud rate to 250 kbps. Uh, and we're also going to have to use two stop bits. So in general, a UART will only use one stop bit. But in this case, we're using two. Now we move on to the loop code. And in the loop code, we're going to decode the frame data that we received via DMX and use that to control the pins on the Arduino. The loop code runs in an infinite loop and we don't want to constantly be writing the same value to the pins on the Arduino. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the update flag to tell us when we can update the pins. Now we're going to implement the main chunk of our DMX decoder and you're going to see that it's really simple. What we're going to do is loop through each value in our DMX data array. And if the value is non-zero, then we're going to set the corresponding Arduino pin high. And if the value is zero, we're going to set the corresponding Arduino pin low. Now we're moving on to implementing the interrupt service routine. And this is where most of the complexity is going to be. So in the setup and the loop functions, then you saw that we're only initializing the data and doing a very simple decode of it. So inside the interrupt service routine is where we're going to have to actually understand the protocol and translate it from DMX into real data that we can store into our array. Now we have the skeleton code for our interrupt service routine. And you can see that we have the beginnings of our state machine. Before we get into the code, it's going to be important to understand what we're doing inside the service routine and how it's going to work. One of the interesting things about DMX is that the protocol was designed specifically for a UART controller. The reason that DMX has the format of a break and then mark after break before the frame starts is because that generates an error inside a standard UART. That error can be used by the microcontroller to notify it that a new DMX frame has started. And this relieves the microcontroller of the burden of constantly checking the DMX frame for a, a start of frame. In the DMX idle state of our state machine, we're going to be waiting for the mark after break. And that's going to signal us to change states. Rather than have the MCU constantly check for the mark after break, we're just going to look for the frame error in the UART registers whenever we get an interrupt. And when we get the frame error, that's going to tell us that we hit the mark after break and we should change states. Another thing to take note of is once we get the frame error to change states, then we also set the current DMX address to 0 and we set the update flag to 1. In the next iteration of the loop function, we're going to update the Arduino pins and that's because the mark after break signals that we just finished a complete DMX frame. Now that we know that the DMX frame has started, then the next thing that we're going to do is wait for the start code in channel 0. This should always be 0 and if it's not, that means that something happened and we should go back to our idle state. Now that we got our start code, that means the DMX frame channels are active. If we were starting from channel 1 all the time, then we'd start collecting data now. However, we implemented a feature that allows us to have an arbitrary start address. And so in this state, we're just going to wait till we get to that start address and then start collecting data. In the DMX start state, we sit and increment the DMX address every time the interrupt service routine is called. Each time the ISR is called, that means a byte has been received by the UART, and that means that another channel has been received from the DMX controller. So we sit and increment the DMX channel address until we reach the start address. Once we reach the start address, that means that we can start collecting data. We set our channel count to zero, and our channel count just keeps track of our position in our data array. Then we write the first byte of data into our data array and then change the state variable. In the DMX run state, we're basically in normal operation and collecting data. Every time the ISR is called, that means a, a byte of data has come in and we write that byte of data into our DMX data array. When we exceed our max number of channels, then we just go to the idle state and wait for the next mark after break. And finally, we have our default state. In general, we're not supposed to get to the state, but if we do, that means that something pathological happened. And so we just go back to our idle state. That's it for the first part of this tutorial. In the second part of the tutorial, we're actually going to hook up a circuit and run the code.